from CGTN headquarters in Beijing, this is The Hub with Wang Guan. Hello and welcome to The Hub. I'm Wang Guan in Beijing. As 2021 is coming to an end, it is time to reflect on this eventful year. 2021 has been unique in more ways than one. COVID is still wreaking havoc around the world and mounting uncertainty and threats are cause for concern too. Climate change stands increasingly at the crux of the world's development and globalization overlaps with geopolitics and power politics. So what, so when it comes to international relations, what has been the breakthroughs and what is holding us back? And more importantly, perhaps, what will the year 2022, the coming year, look like? Recently, the Center for China and Globalization, a very influential think tank in China, compiled a book. Its name is Consensus or Conflict, China and Globalization in the 21st Century. Its contributors included some of the biggest names in the field of international relations. Today, we're very pleased to be joined by two of its authors here, actually editors and co-editor, editor and co-editor. In the hub from Beijing, we have Dr. Wang Huiyao, co-founder and president of the Center for China and Globalization, and also Mr. Alistair Michi, chair of the International Council of CCG and director of the Hampton Group. Uh, welcome to both of you, gentlemen. Uh, Dr. Wang, let me go to you. 38 authors, uh, I mean, they're very esteemed scholars in the field of international relations, uh, covering diplomacy, international politics. Uh, some of them are heads of state. Uh, I mean, certainly a lot of big names over there. Why should readers pick up this book? What's unique about it? Yes, uh, thank you, Wang Guan. Uh, ac actually, uh, you know, uh, this book we uh, just uh, composed at the end of uh, last year, the, around the same time. We were in the middle of pandemic. We were thinking, you know, the war is at the crossroad. How are we going to, uh, uh, you know, uh, find out what's uh, the consensus and also what are the potential conflict? So, so myself and also Alistair, we, we come up with this idea that we should really, uh, you know, gather the uh, opinion leaders and also uh, the worldwide uh, perspective on, on this uh, China and the globalization in the first century. So actually we gathered 35 authors uh, from America, Europe, uh, you know, actually including UK, France, Germany, uh, Swiss and Poland, Russian, African, you know, Asian, and China, of course. So this kind of quite a uh, wide range. And uh, we have a pri former prime minister, we have uh, Joseph Nye, we have, uh, uh, you know, business leaders, we have Pascal Ami, we have, uh, 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 you know, Nobel laureates, and, 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 and a large number of them. Basically, uh, this book covers uh, uh, quite a few important areas. You know, it's policy of the changing of the rule-based world order actually is happening and uh, policy reform governance in public health and humanitarian services governance to nurture next uh, generation of uh, through education migration and exchange and global governance trends towards dealing with the digital and the biosphere re resolution revolutions global governance perspective from african asia north american and europe and lessons from history of the next steps in global governance and trend and soft power in governance uh, uh, you know, the burden of debt and, uh, and also the crisis of communication. So this is a wide-ranging book, but uh, w what's important is never before has so many authoritative authors actually gathered together on this topic. So we want to contribute. Uh, also, as you said, at the, at the end of the year, what reaches back and, uh, and also uh, in perspective, uh, how we can tackle the challenges and the crisis, how we can build up consensus and avoid conflict. I mean, uh, Dr. Wang, certainly a lot of big names over there. Uh, you know, uh, one of my concerns is how diverse are, are the opinions. Certainly they're coming from a very different background. Some of, uh, some of them are Nobel Peace Prize, uh, Nobel Prize laureate for economics. Some of them are former heads of state, uh, very influential former diplomats. Um, do they have a consensus as to where the world is headed? More conflict or more consensus? Well, actually, you know, uh, to, to, to our uh, uh, surprise and also to our uh, expectation, actually, there's more consensus. For example, if the OSIC wants to have a more uh, strengthen the global governance, uh, they, they also want to, you know, for example, Pascal Ami mentioned that, uh, you know, the new, new global order should not just serve in the traditional countries, but also for, you know, serving the new, new emerging economies. Joseph Nye mentioned that we should have a new a uh, Marshall Plan for the COVID-19 uh, globally, and so it could strengthen the global health system. Uh, Edmund Phillips, uh, which think that uh, emerging countries to the, uh, you know, 
when they go to the mid-income income country, which avoid mid-income in-trap and, uh, uh, and also, uh, also self-innovation. And, and many, you know, uh, uh, there's more consensus. For example, they all, uh, you know, nobody uh, wants to have a cold war. Nobody wants to have a decoupling. Uh, everybody says, you know, that, uh, you know, we are in a changing world and we really should uh, get more uh, common, uh, uh, diversified. But of course, we should have, a, uh, have this, because COVID-19 has created this communication crisis. I think Alice there is, is, is an expert on that. We should really, you know, seek to uh, a common uh, ground and then trying to avoid uh, uh, misunderstanding and also uh, even uh, potential conflict or, or hot war. So I think there's quite a big consensus there that we want to uh, seek the common ground and we want to strengthen the global governance and we want to uh, solve this crisis we are in and uh, work together and also we want to avoid uh, uh, you know, conflict. Sure, and Mr. Alistair Michi, uh, let me turn to you. Uh, I, I mean, as a co-editor of this book, how difficult was it uh, to get on board some 35 uh, world uh, esteemed uh, scholars you know, to, to write this book about China? Well, I, uh, this time last year when we started uh, 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 co-editing this book, I was uh, concerned, very concerned that uh, in the climate where uh, the U.S. and China, there was increasing tension, I was concerned that, that we would be able to gather uh, um, uh, enough uh, people of, of status to, to create this book. I was surprised that we... Uh, had such success uh, uh, as we've had um, as uh, we started to the, the process of compilation. And I think the reason is this, is that uh, there is, <clears throat> and what is makes the book unique, is that there is not enough effort made to build these uh, channels of communication, uh, platforms of understanding and dialogue, uh, because if you go back to the uh, global financial crisis of, of 2018, there the, the global leadership through the, the G7 and G20 came together um, and there was dialogue and there was a uh, quite rapid response by global leadership to resolve the, the uh, 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 2008 uh, financial crisis. This time, uh, there has been a vacuum of leadership. There's been a vacuum of dialogue. And that's where I think this book is unique, is that we brought together uh, some of the most influential uh, leaders from right across the world, uh, as Wang Huayao has, has described, and who have come together to give solutions and suggestions as to how we resolve this uh, crisis uh, in global governance. And that, that is where I think that uh, I'm particularly pleased that we have done this, as through uh, 2021, we have moved, I think, quite clearly from uh, a, a, a position of some consensus. We are moving, as 2021 comes to the close, much more uh, worryingly to a world where conflict may be more possible. And that's where I think this book has made uh, I think a valuable contribution to the crucial dialogue we need uh, in the world to create a discussion and a dialogue where we can reform and improve global govern governance and achieve the kind of solutions we need for climate change, the pandemic, uh, issues like AI, uh, many other issues that right. need uh, a right. global consensus. You know, we have uh, as uh, contributors, uh, Mr. Zhu Guangyao, the former Chinese uh, Minister of uh, Finance, of Treasury. Also, Edmund Phelps, uh, the 2006 Nobel Prize laureate for economics. Joseph Nye, of course, uh, the Kennedy School of Harvard, a former dean of Kennedy School. Um, what do you think motivated their, you know, uh, this very diverse group of people to contribute to, the, to this book? I think it's exactly what I was uh, talking about, is that there is, uh, if you provide a kind of platform that this book provides to give a longer form of thought as to how we tackle this crisis in global governance, then you find that people like this are willing to come out and willing to uh, explain their thinking. I think that I've, a lot of people uh, around the world, uh, opinion leaders, 
who have written for this book, they um, shy away from the, the kind of, you know, one minute video clip uh, uh, news comment where their views can often be uh, uh, distorted. Uh, I think what if you give them this kind of, of platform that we've done, which is unique to allow them to give full reign to their thinking, then they will come forward. I find here, particularly in the UK, many people, uh, opinion leaders, are very positive. They want dialogue with China, but they stay on what I call mute uh, at the moment because they do not wish to be attacked in, in the popular and nationalist media. And that's where I think the, the book is unique, that we showed that it's possible to bring out opinion leaders uh, and, and people of authority around the world who can help move us towards uh, a more positive approach to global governance. They will come forward if you provide mm -hmm. them the right platform. And we proved it with this book. Uh, you know, Dr. Wang, uh, one more question about this book. You know, uh, having China voices or the China's perspectives heard or accepted by the Western world is a tough sell. Uh, has been, you know, uh, proven that uh, it's a difficult task, an uh, uphill battle. How do you envision this book, uh, edited by you, to make a breakthrough in that regard? Yeah, thank you, uh, Wang Guan. I think this is really, a, 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 you know, the, the book is really the spirit of, of a globalization. That is really the, the core concept that we are actually, uh, uh, you know, focus on. And, and the globalized world is, is a core component of the, of the creation of a peaceful, a sustainable world. We need a more inclusive globalization. I think that, that is a large consensus, I think, by the global uh, uh, leaders, opinion leaders, and, and scholars. So I think now we, the global government is falling behind global practice. So uh, 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 using uh, Tom Friedman's word, you know, a flat, fused uh, globalized world is racing ahead of the uh, rule-based order. So, so I, I, as we, we are catching up, there is a central governing uh, challenge you know, facing us today. So, so this kind of also complicated by the uh, pandemic. Uh, that, uh, that we are all in this kind of a pandemic crisis has really, you know, given us uh, the old authors uh, uh, a big uh, incentives to, 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 to talk about. And also China, of course, has been uh, one of the second largest economies in the world, has been playing a huge role in terms of, uh, you know, uh, contributing to the new, new order of global governance. I think, you know, people want to say something, people want to express uh, opinions, and then they really mm -hmm. are. So, so it's, it's quite, uh, uh, you know, a uh, surprise actually, you know, this book, we, 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 we just first came out of two months ago. It, a few days after it came out, it has already downloaded over 120,000 <laughs> already downloads uh, worldwide. So, so that has been widely, uh, 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 you know, circulated and uh, has received so many emails and comments. And also, we have uh, 12 very prominent Westerners, uh, you know, people in the West, endorse this book. So that's another uh, uh, ver uh, very encouraging sign that we, this book is well received so that, uh, you know, we can really think that uh, we should uh, really work on this very hard. You know, like we had, the, uh, you know, the senior VP of uh, Asia, Invest, Invest, uh, Asia AIB president, the, the uh, professor from Oxford, uh, uh, Rami Meter, and uh, we have... Uh, you know, former treasury of uh, of uh, of UK Yeah, the author government. of uh, the Forgotten you know, Peter, Ally, uh, Manfield. You know, you know all those all those great people. Yeah, to comment on that. Yeah, uh, Dr. Wang, you said yourself that COVID pandemic provides a unique opportunity for a quote unquote Bretton Woods 2.0. Uh, why did you say that? Well, I think, you know, now, uh, you know, we, we, I think the world, you know, thank, uh, <coughs> we should be grateful for the uh, Great Britain with the system uh, 1.0, where I think in 1944, we, 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 45, we established the UN, you know, World Bank, IMF, WTO, you know, GAD band. So, so it's really, uh, that system has really sustained us for the last 76 years. But by that, you know, 1944, the world is only have a 2.5 billion <laughs> population. Now we have a 7.8. We have grown, you know, really out of this uh, old uh, framework uh, uh, you know, to a large, uh, you know, uh, quantity and, uh, and quality. So I think now we need to upgrade. We need to really uh, uh, improve and enhance the current global system. So that's, I think, you know, as, as uh, uh, you know, uh, Jim, uh, Jim, uh, Jim O'Neill, you know, <laughs> 
who was the creator of, uh, of uh, this uh, new uh, BRICS summit uh, concept, is that, uh, you know, the new emerging economy has gone up, China, India, uh, you know, all the uh, uh, BRICS countries, we should have more reflection of them into the global governance system. So what I'm saying global governance 2.0, so for example, we should have AIB be upgraded to World Infrastructure Bank, maybe we have, should have a new organization for the global governance health system, the UN should reflect that, the, you know, international uh, infrastructure should be really the consensus. So there's many ways, digital economy, you know, and also climate change, and all those things that I think we need a new international system to reflect that, and then where I think BRICS countries, China, and developing countries should be really play more role and more voice be heard in the global governance 2.0. I think that's really important. And Belt and Road should be really working with B3W and EU uh, uh, gateway over those infrastructure consensus that China has led. So I think we should really have more uh, international mm -hmm. governance system to reflect the new reality uh, of this system. Definitely. Um, let's look but ahead Frank, to... I just pick, okay, I just pick up on what uh, Wang Weiyao was saying there. That, um, I think he was absolutely right uh, in his, the essay that he wrote uh, uh, to focus on uh, uh, Bretton Woods and suggest Bretton Woods 2.0. Quite a number of our writers uh, also focused um, on this. I think this gets to one of the core themes of the book, that the current global governance system was established out of the last war in 1945, and that it's, um, uh, that what we're, we're heading, the crisis we're heading, is that the uh, uh, nations that established uh, the main outcome of Bretton Woods, which created the, the current global uh, governance order of the United Nations, the IMF, the World Bank, uh, the, the World Trade Organization, the WHO, all these came out of the, the, in the late 1940s. The problem we face today is that the G7 countries, especially led by the United States, are determined to hold on to that old order. Now, that old order that did us hugely well in uh, the, the time, in the 60, 70 years since the Second World War, but it is no longer working. And that's the crucial aspect of this thread that runs the, the book, of examining uh, Bretton Woods and what it produced and the global order mm -hmm. it, 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 uh, it created. The problem we face is that order is no longer working. And as uh, Wang Huiao touched on in terms of the change, the huge increase in global population uh, since uh, in that period, we now are in a situation that the USA with under 4% of the world's population and the EU nations with under 10%, under 14% of the world's population is trying to dominate the governance of the rest of the world, and it is failing. And it is no surprise that the 86% of the world, which is not included in this old order of global governance, is beginning to wake up that we need a change. And many of the solutions of the change that's needed are in the chapters of this book. And I do hope this program helps even more people to read it because the issues are absolutely crucial that people and the world understand the importance of the points that are made in this book. Right, the book is called Consensus or Conflict, China and Globalization in the 21st Century. Um, I would like to pick your mind and uh, you know, talk about some of the issues at stake going forward in the year 2022, starting with China-US relations. Um, Dr. Wang, we saw the leaders of both countries, uh, Joe Biden and President Xi Jinping, made a phone call not so long ago. Uh, but uh, right after the U.S. Uh, issued the diplomat so-called diplomatic boycott of the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics, where is China-U.S. relations headed, in your opinion, in the coming year? Well, I think that uh, we are certainly in the uh, in, uh, you know uh, uh, you know the first year of uh, since Biden uh, took the uh, administration uh, that we are still in adjustment period. I think that uh, even though that uh, U.S. has uh, uh, has issued some policy towards China, but I think you know this uh, 3C policy, you know, co uh, competition, cooperation, and confrontation. I think you know gradually, probably U.S. is is dropping some would emphasize on the confrontation. Which is, I think, it's not getting any, 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 anywhere because that's not going to be uh, the com consensus of of uh, American or 
all, all the world. So, so I think you know we have to work on the cooperation. I think like for Mr. Wang, he just said a few days ago, we want to you know next year we hope to solve the way uh, that we can mutually uh, uh, acceptable. We're not you know we can be converged of course, be given the culture, size, and uh, background differences. We, but at least we can seek a common ground, work together because the world is so. Uh, intertwined and uh, economy and business and the people to people bond is so tight and we cannot separate. So I think, you know, let's have some uh, uh, rational uh, on that. Let's have more summit, more uh, con consultation between the officials and also people to people, track to the think tank. So I think yeah. that uh, next year we should really work on the, uh, on the consensus we have and uh, let's, let, you know, I mean, uh, cor minimum corporate taxes, climate changes. WTO reform, recently China and US has actually agreed on the service trade. And also let's do more on the liberalization of the investment. Let's all work on that as well. And also, you know, reform WTO. So let's find the big uh, denominator, particularly this infrastructure that US is proposing. US and China can work together with the Europe, uh, EU on that. So, so I think let's find all the common ground, reduce the geopolitical uh, issues. Uh, in, in uh, South China Sea or, 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 or across Taiwan Street. Let's focus on the common prosperity, particularly, you know, next year we hope that uh, the, the pandemic will, will, will find a way to, to probably live with that. We will have to find a global consensus to really open the uh, economy, open the, uh, the traffic, open the uh, mobility of the talent, and still the exchange and things in tourism. Let's, let's work on those uh, urgent issues to, to revive the world economy. I think that probably should be the consensus for both the U.S. and China in the next year. Right, right, right. but we all know that uh, there are politics on both sides and uh, arguably all foreign policy are, are, are politics uh, starting at home. Um, Alistair, um, how do you look at this? I mean, um, Jacob Liu, uh, the former U.S. Uh, Treasury Secretary, even said that, for example, uh, when Joe Biden wanted, even if Joe Biden wanted to lift the tariffs um, on China, he does not have the political space to do so, according to Jacob Liu, the former U.S. Treasury Secretary. Um, how do you look at the domestic constraints uh, on Washington, on, on Joe I, Biden? I think, I think that we should not look at it uh, as just U.S.-China. Uh, yes, the U.S.-China relationship is pivotal and very important, but I come back to the issues that are uh, running through the whole book, is this challenge of, of global governance. We, we lack strong leadership uh, in all the, 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 the major high-income high countries. UK, the, the leadership of the Prime Minister is extremely weak now. Germany, Merkel has left, unknown as to how Germany will be led forward. France, under Macron, it's weak as well because he's facing e elections. That Japan is weak. So we lack the kind of global leadership we desperately, urgently need as a world that we did get, as I referred to, in the last global, uh, big global crisis, the global financial crisis of 2008. This crisis is much, much worse with the pandemic, with climate change, the need for regulation in areas like AI, the need for regulation in areas like nuclear. There is no consensus. There is no strong leadership. So we are in a situation where China, as a still a developing country, has a huge responsibility going forward uh, with the stability and the strong leadership it has now to give a understanding lead in a world that is uh, dragged down by weak political leadership elsewhere. This is a really serious issue. It is why we have this crisis in global governance and this is the issues that are running right through this book. Yeah, we don't have to look very far, right? Uh, it's Christmas season and uh, prices are up, uh, you know, uh, largely due to supply chain disruptions. Uh, I asked my American friends, uh, they're really hesitant about uh, how many, you know, Christmas gifts to buy this year because prices are up. If you look at the, the U.S. CPI, that was up nearly 7% uh, last um, month. Um, Dr. Wang, how do you look at the global supply chain disruptions and uh, really where is that headed uh, in the coming year? I think this pandemic has exposed uh, the weakness of the, of the global supply chain. But also you can also, uh, China stands out to be the, uh, the backbone for the global supply chain. For example, uh, you know, out of the 10 largest container ports uh, 
uh, in the world. China has seven of them, and uh, China has uh, two thirds of a global speed railway uh, also built up. And uh, and so so you can see that also China, uh, EU, China uh, cross continental train has has actually increased thirty uh, percent last year. So so there's a lot of uh, you know China uh, 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 reliability to sustain the world. I mean with this pandemic fighting. So. So you can see how silly we are. We are still fighting for the uh, for the political, geopolitical issues where our, our, our livelihood, our, our well-being has been threatened. We can't even have a good Christmas and uh, New Year uh, uh, holiday season uh, because uh, because of this uh, pandemic, also because of the supply chain. All the container going out of China is full, and uh, uh, and then there's many empty empty uh, container return, uh, whereas the container has quite has gone. It's gone up uh, significantly. So I think that, that actually reminds us we have to work together. I understand the U.S. is having a midterm election. Alistair mentioned there are many elections in Western uh, European countries, but the U.S. is a midterm election. Uh, President Biden may be, uh, you know, uh, t- hands tied uh, for some of the action. But I think it's really great, you know, to revive the economy, to stimulate the economy of the U.S. and, and the world by lifting tariffs on China, but, you know, so that it can have a better economy and also by uh, facilitating the uh, trade between China and investment. So let's do that to stimulate the economy, have a strong economy, employment, and uh, better holidays, so that really, I mean, that, that will change. With this corporate minimum tax, China will be, will be taking off of the scapegoat for some of the, you know, the tax not returned to the U.S. So, so I think, you know, it's really great that uh, we're looking for 22. This economy gave us a very good uh, lesson that we are really intertwined. We are one world. <laughs> we cannot separate each other. So let's have this Winter Olympic spirit. You know, come together. You know, uh, faster, higher, and uh, yeah. uh, you know, working really together to really find the peace for the world. Right, right, right. The, the, the book uh, Consensus or Conflict also pointed out, and I quote, that uh, our world is in a communication crisis. Um, I mean. Uh, we all know that it's no secret that uh, we have been in this communication crisis. But really, how can we resolve this issue, Dr. Wang? Well, I think we, we should really, uh, you know, uh, strengthen the, the dialogue. We, you know, we, for example, CCG has conducted over 100 uh, events, webinars, track to dialogues. Uh, you know, I've been in dialogue with over 20 uh, prominent world leaders and, uh, and opinion leaders. And then this book is the you know over 38, 38 authors offered uh, a worldwide opinion. So so you know it's just one of the efforts we are trying. But I think we should need more of that. We should you know open the student exchanges. We should really relax the uh, mobility of the people. Find a way you know how we can really uh, you know uh, also have more uh, people to people exchanges. Frequency of the of the dialogue and the official visits so important. High level head of diplomacy. You know, I mean, uh, you know, all those things we need to really strengthen that. And uh, but also, I think we we need to improve our narrative as well, have a better understanding communication. I think that's one of the book is of this book is doing is to really present a, a, a diversified view. But let's seek the common ground and consensus. I think that's where we should do, and that's CCG is trying to do. All right, Dr. Wang Huiyao, founder and president of the Center for China and Globalization, and also Mr. Alistair Michi, chair of the International Council of CCG. Um, By the way, Dr. Wang is uh, editor of the book Consensus or Conflict, and Alistair is the co-editor. Thank you both for joining us on The Hub on CGTN, and that will do it for this edition of The Hub. Thank you for watching. Get in touch with us on social media if you have any suggestions. Bye for now.